My name is Associate Professor Inga Newburn. I'm the founder and managing editor of the Thesis Whisperer blog and I'm the Director of Research Training at the Australian National University. This is a screen recording of a presentation I did at the Quality in Postgraduate Research Conference in Adelaide, April of 2018. Uh, this presentation, Desperately Seeking MacGyver, is part of a larger research program around PhD graduate employability. Basically, we're interested in helping PhD graduates find better jobs inside and outside academia. And to do this, we want to get inside employers' heads, find out what they really want from our PhD graduates. The way we're doing this at the moment is to analyse job advertisements. You can think of a job ad as a kind of employer wish list. We're doing this work with machine learning and a big data approach so that we can analyse tens of thousands of jobs at once and draw general conclusions from them. This presentation follows on from our first paper in the series, which was called Academic Superheroes, and we wanted to keep with the superhero theme, so we chose the 80s TV show MacGyver as our analogy, for reasons that will become clear, I promise. This presentation will be in several parts. The first video will explain the previous research that underpins the project. Researching PhD graduate employability is important it's now more normal for graduates to leave academia at the end of their PhD than to stay. The PhD itself started as a degree just to train academics. If you think about it, it's an experiential learning model. You learn to become an academic by doing academic work in the form of an original research project that then is written up as a dissertation, or as we often call it in, in Australia, a thesis. The structure of the PhD degree the degree it hasn't changed a great deal since it was invented sometime in the early, early 20th century, depending on how you measure it. But the job market for PhD graduates has changed radically. Put simply, there's not enough jobs in academia to absorb all our graduates. As you can see in this graph, only 40% of Australian graduates remain in academia after they complete their PhD. But that 40% figure hides a lot of underemployment. Of that 40%, only 25% have any kind of job permanency. Most people in that dark blue quadrant are straight out of the PhD in a phase we call the post-post-postdoc phase of their career. This involves a lot of moving around, what we call hypermobility, where people have to change cities, even countries, every year or two in order to find their next academic gig. For obvious reasons, hypermobility doesn't suit everyone which is why it's now more normal for people to seek employment elsewhere. And the question for educators like me is, is the current PhD structure, a research project which is written up as a large document, enough to prepare people for a wide range of career outcomes? For some time now, there's been a recognition that just doing research and writing it up might not be enough training for academics, which is where critical instruments like this one come in. This is the Research and Development Framework, or RDF. It was developed by the Vitae organisation in the UK from a series of interviews with working researchers. The researchers were asked simply, what do you do all day? And the answers revealed a large spectrum of skills other than just research and writing. The segments you see in this diagram, which we call domains, show a wide range of skills and capabilities, such as managing money, disseminating research finding, findings, teamwork, and creative thinking. This RDF tool has been used by people like me for some years now to design supplementary programs for PhD candidates that make them more employable as researchers. The right-hand side of the RDF is about research and knowledge and the ability to do research itself. The thinking, analysing, synthesising work, as well as the ability to manage yourself through that process, to deal with uncertainty and to keep on task. The left-hand side of the RDF is about the context of academia. It's about how to get grants and where to publish, working with others, doing financing, funding and project management. The way we use this tool as educators is to look at each of the domains and the smaller subdomains and make workshops, for instance, on social media or how to pull together a project budget. In this way, we supplement the basic PhD experience with useful workshops that extend people's skill sets in their future academic career. The RDF is a good, flexible tool for educators like myself to think about academic career destinations, but does it work for non-academic careers? 
We'll answer this question in the next part of this presentation, but first I want to explain a bit about how this research came about, the journey we've been on and how it evolved from an initial idea by my friend, Dr. Rachel Pitt. At the time, Rachel was looking for another postdoc um, and complained to me about the variability that she saw in job ads, uh, particularly ones that were actually of the same pay grade. She was bewildered by the sheer variety of tasks that people were expected to do and surprised at the expectation of employers. Rachel shared this observation with me while we were eating some corn chips and watching TV, as you do, and we came up with the idea to study the ads themselves to see what academic employers really want. Together we designed a small study to test out the RDF against these job ads and the question we asked ourselves was, does the RDF match what empl academic employers are looking for? So we did a hand-coded text analysis of a bunch of academic jobs and the results of this analysis were published as the paper which is on the top right of this slide. As you can see on the left, the radar graph representations of our analysis the content of the job ads as broadly as they match the RDF. We did, we did the analysis and we found that the emphasis in the job ads was not what we expected. The top graph is for level A academics in the Australian system. These jobs are usually aimed at people doing a PhD. The middle graph is for academic level B jobs, which is the majority of ads in our sample, and these were for entry level post-graduation academics. And the bottom graph is for level C jobs, usually academics with five years of experience or more. You can see that people are expected to be literally more well-rounded as they progress through the academic ranks, as you might expect. However, the emphasis surprised us. The left-hand side of the RDF domain, remember the stuff conventionally not in a PhD program, was far more employers than, important to employers than the stuff on the right-hand side what we conventionally teach PhD candidates. The good news from this research was that the type of programs that I run, which extend graduate skills into these non-conventional PhD domains, are actually critically important. People will not find it easy to get academic jobs without the skills in communication, project management, social media, and so on that we teach. And the next obvious question was, does the RDF still work for non-academic career destinations? and I'll continue our research story in the next video.